Now then, um, today I thought we'd have a look at the old War of the Ring rule book, have a bit of a flip through uh, and see what it's all about. So as you can see, um, it's a big thick um, hardback book from Goes Workshop. Shop, was released in 2008 I believe. Um, and I don't think it was in production for that long, if I'm honest. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, but we'll have a flip through the book and, and see what it is all about. So we've got a contents page, a bit of artwork there. Um, so we've got the introduction, the rules themselves. Um, I think the rules take us up to about page 81, and then it's army lists after that. Uh, and I think there's about 328 pages in the book. So there's about 200 pages of army lists and scenarios and painting guides in there as well. Um, so, yeah, this is what it's all about, big battles. Um, so I'll go through the introduction, what you need to play. Uh, bit of an overview. Yeah, but, uh, an example battle report there, just um, as an introduction to the game, really. Um, it's actually quite good. I'll read through that. And then we'll go on to the actual rules themselves. So the way it works then is... Um, when you're putting your army together, uh, you're buying your units in companies. So a company, for example, for Rohan would be something like that. It's a company of bowmen. So it's just a little base uh, with eight figures on. Um, and then for cavalry, it's a company is just a base with two on, like that. Um, what you do is you add all your bases together to form what's known as a formation. So you've got a formation of three bases there. Uh, and in the army list, it tells you how many um, companies you can have per formation. Um, so for stuff like orcs and things, you probably have nine. And then for more elite units, you probably have less companies allowed per formation, which makes sense. Um, so different formations that you can form, um, all that sort of stuff, dice and measuring, character characteristics. What I do like about this game is um, in the game turn, each turn you roll for priority um, at the beginning. Whoever has priority then moves first um, and then the opponent moves and then priority player shoots and then the other player shoots. So it's kind of interactive. So you don't do everything in your turn and then your opponent does everything. It's kind of staggered. So you move, they move, you shoot, they shoot, etc, etc, like that. Um, so it makes it a little bit more interactive, and uh, I quite like that. Um, obviously, I've, I haven't had a game yet, but I, I'm liking the way it's, it's kind of reading. Um, so going to priority, movement. Movement's very free and easy as well. Very similar to Hail Caesar, actually, in the way that as long as no part of your base moves um, further than its movement allowance, you can line it up whichever way you want. So you're not getting bogged down in um, wheeling and, and all that sort of stuff. You just move stuff, which is good. It just speeds everything up. Shooting, dead simple. Um, and hand-to-hand, -hand it worked out pretty much in the same way. Um, charging, fighting. It's all very simple. Um, there's defensible terrain. All the different arms and armour. Um, bit there on command companies for when you're building your army, so it's just your your initial base you purchase for your formation will have its have the commanders on. If you if you choose to put a captain in there or a, a musician or a standard bearer or whatever, that's called your command company. That's all that means. Um, onto some special rules. Loads of stuff in here. Onto magic. Apparently, what I've read is that the magic rules are a bit overpowered. Um, but some suggestions that people have made online um, just to limit the amount of magic that you can use or limit the amount of magic users you have in each army. So one per thousand points or something. Um, yeah, and then to battle, got some um, scenarios, different uh, ways of setting things up. Then it goes on to the army list and it explains all how you build your army, um, fortunes and fates. Um, so these are like special abilities and special weapons, etc. that you can give your armies. So fortunes are 
for the good guys basically and your fates are for the bad guys i believe yeah looks like it um so we've got the gondor army um yeah loads of stuff there's a good few pages per army and it goes into your different commanders that you can attach bit of a painting reference there kingdom of rohan which is obviously what i'm interested in um going through basically it's got all these different army lists in here um let's try and get to the end of all the army lists yep this is the moria goblins the Angmar. okay apologies just find the next bit so after the army list it's literally it's all this is your army lists yeah all that there that big chunk with all the different army lists all in one book which is cool so there's no going out and buying separate codexes and army books and that sort of stuff um a bit of a collecting and playing guide how to collect an army some different examples um different armies people have collected remember this from the old back in the day the old games workshop books used to have like little painting guides in there and how to convert things and what paints to use etc even how to make your own homemade movement trays although they actually sold their own plastic ones at the time um, they're still showing you giving you ideas how to make your own assembling metal models banners and stuff like that and it goes on a battlefield terrain uh, and then some great battles. So it's got kind of historical um, battles from Middle Earth uh, from the book. So you've got the, the Fords of Eisen and the Army List for them, Shield Wall across the Eisen there, how to alter the scenarios if you've got a smaller table, um, Ugluk's Last Stand. That's where, if you watch films or, or read the books, it's where uh, Merry and Pippin uh, are snatched by the UK. And uh, the riders of Rome come and rescue them. And the two hobbits run off into Fangorn, don't they? And meet up with um, Treebeard. So that's that bit. Um, Relief of Helm's Deep. Some stuff there about multiplayer games. Fall of Isengard. With all the Ents, all the tree men. Destroying the place. Skiliath. Yes, there's loads in there anyway. Um... Yeah, tons of stuff in here. Um, loads of battles that you can play out. The only thing limiting you, I suppose, is um, your terrain and your imagination, I suppose, of what you want to do. Um, some adverts and things at the back there. And then the, the book's finished off with quick reference sheets as well. Um, there we go. All your spells and everything are on there. And a good index and rules index as well, which is quite cool. So that's a really quick flip through of the book. Um, I'm really impressed with it. I think it's really good. Um, I wish they'd bring it back, to be honest. It'd be quite cool. I wonder what they'll do with the um, the new Amazon, Amazon TV series that's coming out, whether they'll bring anything out for it. But anyway, I have finished off my Rohan army as well. But I'll do a separate video on that shortly. Cheers for watching. Bye-bye.